Hey guys, there are many of you who are baptized. You say you're Christians, you may be baptized, you may be, um, you're going to church or you're, you are searching the things of God, you love God, you wanna serve him, but you don't have wisdom. You don't have wisdom, you don't have understanding, you don't have discretion. This is very, very important. That is how many Christians are getting beat up and tripped up because in everything that they're doing, you're just running full throttle forward, um, not understanding what forgiveness is. Okay, I'm supposed to forgive my enemies. That's what the Lord says. Yes, you're supposed to. We have to. You cannot enter into heaven. The Holy Spirit will not. The, the Father will not forgive you for your sins if you have not forgiven others. That is absolutely true. J Jesus spoke about that over and over again. But then again, you don't have discretion and understanding and wisdom to understand the intricate workings of what that means. You must first forgive and really out of your mouth, say it, okay? But you don't have the wisdom to know that, okay, God doesn't expect that once you say you forgive someone or you ask him to help you to forgive a person, that he doesn't expect that your heart still won't hurt. Right, He knows that your heart's still going to hurt, but you don't have the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to know that it's now a process. And many times people don't go through that process. They try to just cover their feelings up right, and try and immediately bring themselves back to this person who has done harm to them and they have not been healed. God has not made them whole. So now the person does something against and they're devastated. Okay. And they go even further into bitterness and sometimes, yes, God wants you to forgive this person, but it wasn't for you to go back into their presence again, okay? It wasn't for you to go back into that same friendship and that same, giving them that same access. But if you don't have wisdom and you don't have understanding then and, and you don't have discretion, then you're going to go to one extreme or the other of either just being dark in your heart and cutting people off with hatred and malice in your heart or constantly running over and getting egg on your face and getting, you know, hurt over and over again, which takes you off of the course of the things of God because you can't focus, you're being hurt, you're in a toxic relationship, right? So you need to have the balance to know exactly how God wants you to deal with these type of relationships. Sometimes people don't have wisdom and knowledge. They don't have understanding. They want the things of God. They want the blessings of God, but you find that their character does not, it's not up to par. So that's why you find them being wealthy and making mistakes wealthy and using their house as a place to have orgies and parties or having many properties and things all over the, the place where, oh, I can put my boyfriend over here and my girlfriend can stay here. And if one of my friends wants to go somewhere to meet their lover or go with their boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be, oh, they can call me and I'll give them the keys to my beach house in Venice. Well, God has blessed you with these things, but what are you doing? What's your character leading you to do? One of the things, too, that the Lord has shown me is absolutely foolishness and not wisdom and is actually a sin is when someone will buy a huge house and you can only live out of the 32 rooms, out of the 12 bathrooms you have, you can use about one. Out of the 34 rooms, you're only in about three of them. And there are these other parts of the house that you've never been in or haven't been in in a long time. But why did you get it? Pride and for show. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, it is so wrong when there's so many people who are homeless and without a home, people in your church, in the churches of some of these leaders that are struggling and they have eight houses and they don't live in, they only live in one of them. And they only live in a section of one of them. It is a sin. A lot of people may not agree with me, when God blesses you, he does not give you blessings to squander. 
He does not give you all these things so you can have six and seven houses, a house that you don't live in. And you're not going to put anybody in there that you, you're not going to put a stranger in that house, are you? Somehow God told you to build all these houses and, and all these things, but he hasn't put it in your heart that you put this family in this place or you, you help this household. When you buy a house for $3.5 million, think of how many homes you could have built. And because this is just one of your many homes. Guys, you're not going to tell me that's of God. It's not. God's not going to have you with seven and eight houses, six houses, four houses. And there's people who's starving and hungry. And don't say, well, I give. Because a lot of times people are doing these things for tax write-offs. And the things that you're giving is not your money. It's the church money, which came from the people, not you. Guys, we have to have wisdom and understanding to be led by God. So even when he blesses our hand, that we do not have selfish ambition, that we do not purchase things out of pride. I'm not telling you that God does not want you to have nice things. You may have timeshare. You may have a home. You may have nice things. There's nothing wrong with that. All I'm saying is use discretion. I'm not telling you got to be bummy. I'm not telling you got to be ashamed of your wealth or the things that you accomplish, <clears throat> the things that you accomplish in your life, my brothers and sisters. But the problem is there's a lot of things that people have built that God did not tell them to build. They have done, they have spent money and done some things that God did not tell them. They simply made just purchases out of the greed it comes from a spiritual gluttony that is in them to just have more, 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 more than their one little bodies can accommodate. I have to have all these cars. I'm going to drive this car on Monday and this car on Tuesday and this car on Wednesday. But then sometimes you have so many fleets of cars that you really can't keep up with them. You have so much clothes, you can't keep up with them. So guys, we have to use wisdom. Wisdom in everything, wisdom in what you listen to, wisdom in who you seek counsel from. A lot of times you just look at a person and because it said they say pastor or it says Christian on them, you go and you utter all your heart. The word of God says only a fool utters all his heart. So here you go because this person's a Christian, because they say that they're Christian, and because this is your grandmother's friend, you go and you tell them all your business. Well, you're not using any wisdom and discretion to know what you're supposed to say and what you're not supposed to say, or even if you're supposed to be going to this person. Sometimes you even have to use wisdom in how people come to you and what they're bringing to you. Don't let people come in and bring you a dead rat and bring you information all the time because you have to guard your ears. Just as you have to guard your eyes, you have to guard your ear gate. So you have to use wisdom and knowledge and discretion. You ask the Lord to teach you how to walk in this, to give you his wisdom so that you're not taking, you're not answering every email. You're not taking every phone call. And if you're taking the phone call, you're not just blurting out what you think. And you have to have discernment and discretion that even while you're listening to what's being said and what's reading, you want wisdom and understanding and discretion to screen these calls for you or to screen the, meaning screen the content of the phone conversation, screen the content of the email and see the intent of the heart. And when he shows you those things, then you need to listen to him and listen to the voice of God so that you are not making mistakes. You are not sitting with your husband and your wife in front of a pastor or pastors or leaders who does not have your best interest at heart. You're not using wisdom and knowledge and discretion in where your kids are supposed to be going. You just let your kids get in the car and go off, send your daughter off, your son off with this person because they're from the church. Somebody want them to come cut their grass, your teen son. Some man or woman want them to come cut their grass. Well, sometimes it's absolutely innocent, but you need to use discretion. There's no wisdom in discretion. There's no wisdom, discretion, or balance in the families of when you're, if you're actively in a church, that you all both are so busy 
that you have to take separate cars because you're not going to be able to ride down there together because one of you have to be down there before the other. You can't ride together because one of you have to stay back to do something. And while there may be reasons this will happen, it should not be so often that you as husband and wife, you as a family, are not really together. The God, the, the, our God is not going to split families, y'all. There's a time to labor and to do the things of God. But you'll find that you're separated most of the times. And then you are getting close to the other people that you're working with. And this is how oftentimes affairs will start. Mm -hmm. This is how affairs start, guys. This is how, uh, you know, Brother Boogaloo start looking kind of good to you. Right? Even though before you knew he had them run over shoes, all of a sudden it starts to fade because you're spending more time with him. Okay? All of a sudden, Sister Honey Smacks got all this advice she want to tell you, and she seems to understand you more than your wife. Why? Because you, you're busy riding, you, you're going to church without her, without your wife. You're staying back with six, Sister Honey Smacks on the admin team with you. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. So many people have families, and... You don't spend time with them because you're busy doing church stuff. And then your children end up resenting God because they feel like God is robbing them of their childhood and their parents and things of that nature because you fail to balance family life. Ladies, we have to use wisdom and understanding in what we do, in what we engage in. Just because you're single does not mean <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I have my fan going. Doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm, I don't have to account to nobody. We account to our Heavenly Father. So we have to use wisdom and knowledge and discretion in the things that we put on, in the things that we listen to, in the places that we go. A lot of Christians still go to these comedy shows where there's a bunch of cursing, drinking, stuff going on. And you, you swear you're a Christian because you do Christian things. Don't let the devil rob you guys. Don't let the devil rob you in telling you you're just supposed to be a, a Christian. You just trust. You be nice to everybody. You, you, you do this. You open up your home. You do whatever you want to do. You, 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 he, there is a balance. There's certain things that you should do as a Christian and certain things you should not do. There's certain things, while it is good, it may not be lawful. There's certain things that, while it would be a great idea, you need to seek counsel on exactly how to go about it. Every Christian project, it does not mean you got to be in it and doing it and a part of it. You must use wisdom, knowledge, and discretion. When this man is coming up to you and saying he just wants to talk to you and, and he, oh, he's so, he's happy that you're saved and he wants to know more about God. Wisdom and knowledge and discretion is going to kick in and tell you that you need to get your husband involved if you are married. And it's not just you praying with brother, I want to be saved. And you having lunch with sister, I want to be saved without your wife. And wisdom, knowledge, and discretion will show you these things. It will show you the deep things. It will show you the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Wisdom and knowledge and discretion will make you aware of the feelings of your husband or your wife or your partner. It will not make you selfish. You will not make selfish, endangering decisions. It's so important, guys, that we're seeking the Lord, that in addition to walking in the Lord, in addition to being a Christian, a Bible reading Christian, that you are actually allowing the word of God to enter into your heart to bring those changes that needs to be made so that in your everyday life, you're just not going head on into collision because you're being led by wisdom, by knowledge, by understanding. And this is going to come from God. And it's going to come from the fear of the Lord, which means you obey him. If you can't obey God in the little things, you're not going to be able to obey him in the bigger things. All right, guys.
Peace out.